How can I, 20 female, tell my best friend forever, 20 female, that I'm sleeping with her father, 46 male, and not lose them both? Backstory, when I was a little kid, my piece of crap parents got divorced, and I ended up with my piece of crap mother and we moved back to her home state and somehow managed to live with my grandparents who were not a piece of crap people. I was thrown into a school with total strangers, and I was given mountains of crap for talking funny, because I was born and raised in the south, and was now living in New England. The first person to decide to be nice to me, and be my friend was Kate, not a real name, of course. Kate quickly became my best friend forever, and we have been best friend forevers ever since. Because my mom is an awful piece of human garbage I spent as much time as possible with Kate and her family over the years. Not only was I accepted by them, but eventually I started to look at them as the family I always thought a family should be. By high school I was calling Don and Joan, Kate's parents, also not real names, mom and dad respectively. They always welcomed me into their home. I always had food, a place to stay, you name it. They even took me on a couple of family vacations. I love this family with all my heart. The story takes a turn for the strange in 2018 when, after Kate and I graduated high school and Don and Joan had no more kids in the house as they were all on their own or in college, that Joan decided to come out of the closet as a lesbian, admit to an affair, that had lasted the entire time they were married, and file for a divorce. I'm sure you can imagine that Don, Kate, her brothers, and well everybody, was devastated. Kate went off to college, in California, and neither of her brothers was around and, so Don was kind of on his own. Since I wasn't going to further my education, and stay in town I promised my best friend forever, to make sure her dad was okay, looking on him often. All that. Well, I tried community college and that didn't work out, but I got lucky and my grandma pulled in a favor, and got me a job as a teller in one of the local banks, so I was at least somewhat productive in society. I'd called on and text him a few times to check on him, but things got crazy last summer. I ran into him at the grocery store one afternoon after work. I saw what he was buying, and it made me super sad. It was like all the single bachelor tropes all in one. So, being the good best friend forever that I am, I insisted that Don buy some actual food, and that I'd go over to his place after work on Friday, and make him a home cooked meal. I've been cooking, since I was young, I kind of had to learn, and we both agreed, that he needed it. So Friday came around, and I went over, and cooked him a nice chicken parmesan dinner, we had fun visiting for a bit, and I went home feeling good about myself. We agreed to do this every week. The next week, after dinner, he asked if I'd stay for a bit and hang out. So we fired up Xfinity on demand, and got Cozy on the couch. I don't know exactly what led this next part, to happen but it happened. Maybe it was the love scene in what we were watching. I don't know. All I know, is that he seemed super lonely, and I felt bad for him, so I initiated things, and gave him head. When I left that night, things were a little awkward, but we decided to continue our Friday dinner tradition. The next week, after the movie, he asked if I could stay around a little longer. I ended up staying the night. That was when we first made love. Friday night dinner became Friday night dinner and love making and that lasted another 8 or 9 weeks. Then we started, being more open about what we were doing. Going out to eat during the week. Going to a movie or shopping. All that stuff. Despite a lot of people we know giving us the side eye for it. All the while I was keeping everything a secret from Kate. My best friend forever. Fast forward to COVID and that, combined with my lack of ability to judge friends well, resulted in my roommates bailing on me, and leaving me on the hook for our entire apartment. I got lucky, in that a landlord let me out of the lease, but that put me in a spot. I was going to have to move back in with my piece of a crap mother. I was desperate to avoid that, and then Don stepped in and saved me, kind of. He asked me to move in with him. I did and we've been living as a couple ever since. Recently, Don has stopped using a condom when we make love, and he's asked me to quit taking birth control too. He says he wants to marry me and start a family and the whole deal, and now I'm wondering how the freak do I tell Kate about this. I love Kate on so many levels and I don't want to lose her, but I'm terrified that she'll be mad. I don't know if I can give up Don to keep Kate, though. 
I do know that I'd die a little inside if I stayed with Don and that ruined his relationship with his daughter, though. I know this is a you want your cake and eat it, two moment but what's the point of having the cake if you can't eat the freaking thing? Please, someone, anyone, give me some idea about how to proceed. Please? Update. How can I, 20 female, tell my best friend forever, 20 female, that I'm sleeping with her father, 46 male, and not lose them both? I gave a lot of thought to the questions posed to me, and came to some conclusions. I want to get better. The day after posting I was visibly bothered by deep thoughts at work, and one of my co-workers was concerned and asked me about what was bothering me. So, I told her the whole story. Together we looked into if my insurance would cover therapy. It doesn't even with COVID making it a video chat only kind of deal I started yesterday at lunch. Tuesday the 21st. I decided to get the freak out of the situation as well. I moved out of the house this past weekend, and into a spare room, that one of my co-workers offered for me to use, until I can get some money together, to relocate once the pandemic ends and I can get a transfer to a different branch. Hopefully out of state. This is awkward and life just took a crazy turn, but I'm told, that getting through this mess that I made, will make me a better person in the end. I spent Friday night down at the shore at my grandpa's house so I could be somewhere that I love and feel safe at for the next part. I called Kate. It went like anyone would expect. No lies. The worst conversation I've ever had. I told her, when it was all said and done, that I wasn't expecting her to ever forgive me as I don't know if I deserve it. She knows that I'm not there anymore, and I'm going to try my hardest to put as much distance as possible between me and her family as soon as possible. I ended the call by telling her that I won't be initiating contact anymore. I'm going to give her all the space and time that she needs, even if that means I'll never talk to her again. I do love her more than life itself, and I hope that we can eventually recover, but I doubt we will. This is my fault, and I'm trying to take accountability, here. My, 28 female, best friend. 29 female, since birth gave me a bad reference for a job she told me to apply to. Background, our parents have known each other since before we were born. My parents moved across the street from her parents. Her mom baked my mom and dad a cake and they've been friends ever since. They even got pregnant around the same time and gave birth a few months apart. Tori and I grew up together and have always been close. We were inseparable as kids and have always called each other sisters. Freshman year of high school, her dad got a job opportunity and they ended up moving to Cali. We were in Ohio at the time, so it was kind of hard to maintain a long distance friendship because of the time difference and everything that was going on in our lives, but we remained close, alternating visiting each other during our summer breaks. We applied and got into the same college after high school, so we were finally reunited at college as we were in the dorm together. Things were perfect present day, we are both married to our husbands. We live in the same town. Our husbands are best friends as well. Due to this COVID pandemic, I was laid off from my telemarketing job. It was fine at first, because my husband was able to pick up a few extra shifts and maintain our household, but his overtime started getting cut so now we were only living off of one income and have had to use our savings to pay a few bills. As of recently, I've been looking for a new job and it's been hard, because no one has been hiring. Tori and I get together once every other week for drinks. I mentioned to her that I was having a hard time job searching, and she suggested that I apply at her job, and that she would put in a good word for me, and I'd be hired. We talked about how fun it would be to work together. Tori is in a similar field as I was. Not the same, but she said that I'd have no problem getting in and that they'd train me for whatever I didn't know. Later that week, I applied and was called a few days later for a phone interview. We went over my application and she asked how I was referred to the job. I mentioned Tori, and she genuinely sounded excited and bragged about what a great employee Tori is, and how if she was referring me, I'd probably be a perfect fit. We finished up the phone interview, and she said that she would ask Tori a few follow-up questions, but that the job was pretty much mine and to be expecting a call back by a certain day. I texted Tori telling her how things went, and thanking her immensely. However, the day came, that I was supposed to hear something back, and I haven't heard anything. 
As Tori and I get together, I asked her if her boss ever asked her about me, and Tori said no, and that she would let me know if she did two more weeks passed, and still no word. I asked Tori again and all she said was that they decided to hire someone else because they had more experience, so I dropped it after that. A month later, and I'm finally back working, and my husband and I are getting back on our feet. I suggested that we invite Tori and her husband over for dinner and my husband immediately said no. I've noticed that my husband and her husband haven't been talking. I asked him about it, and he brushed it off. I asked Tori about it at a get together, and she brushed it off as well. However, I knew that was odd as they talked almost daily, and got together weekly for beer and poker with a few other friends and that hasn't been happening either. I decided to press the issue more with my husband and he finally broke down, and said that the reason why he and Matt weren't speaking was because of Tori. He explained that the job Tori said she would speak up for me to get, she did the opposite. I asked what he meant, and he explained that her boss actually did ask Tori about me, and she said a few things to deter her from hiring me. I asked why he kept this from me for so long, and he said it was better that I didn't know because he didn't want to ruin our friendship. Matt told him what Tori did, and he told Matt to tell Tori to do the right thing. They got into an argument and that's why they weren't speaking. I called Tori, and she admitted that my husband was telling the truth, and said the reason why she didn't vouch for me was that she didn't want things to change between us, because at work she was a completely different person, whatever that meant. So after thinking about asking me to apply, she decided to change her mind, but couldn't bring herself to tell me that. I was disgusted. She knew how much my husband and I were struggling, and decided to sabotage my chance of getting a job for no real reason. I hung up, and blocked her number. It's been nearly a month and we haven't talked yet, however, my husband and her husband are back on speaking terms and my husband wants me to make up with Tori and let it go, so that things can go back to how they were. However, I'm not sure if they can. I feel like I've been stabbed in the back. Do I have a right to feel how I feel? Or is it time? to move on and let bygones be bygones? I admit that I do miss her, but I feel like I can't trust her anymore. Had she told me the truth from the beginning, I would've been okay, but she lied to my face on multiple occasions. Update, my 28 female best friend, 29 female, since birth gave me a bad reference for a job she told me to apply to. I called Tori yesterday and allowed her to meet up, apologize, and explain more in depth. She accepted my offer, and we had lunch at a nearby restaurant today. Some of you guessed that the reason that she didn't want me at her job was that she could have been hiding something. That was correct. She told me that she was indeed having an affair with a co-worker. I didn't buy it at all. It just didn't make sense, because if that was the case, why would she tell her husband that she sabotaged me rather than keep that to herself? Turns out that my husband was pressuring him for answers as well, and her husband kept reminding her to ask her boss why I didn't get the job. That's when she told him what she did. She also gave him a completely different explanation of why she didn't want me to work there. She showed me months of steamy texts between her and her co-worker, so I knew then that she was telling the truth. I asked her why she didn't just tell me. She said that she was scared that people at her job would ask me questions and it would come out that she's married. The guy at her job that she's been seeing doesn't even know and thinks they are in an exclusive relationship. She said that if I found out about the affair, she was afraid that I'd tell my husband and since her husband's are best friends, he would tell hers. She gets together with her co-worker for a few hours after work and on weekends. She doesn't even work on weekends. Her husband thinks that she is at work all this time. She said that having me work there would ruin things as our schedules wouldn't add up and it would get back to her husband and he would question her about why. I asked her why would she have me apply and say that she would get me in knowing she had no intention of having me work with her. She said that she didn't think I'd take her up on her offer as I've made comments before about her work sounding boring, and that she was hoping that if she dragged it out long enough, I'd get tired of waiting and look elsewhere. The million dollar question that I asked her was, what did you say to your boss to change her mind about offering me the job? 
She said she told her boss that having me work there would honestly probably just be a distraction and she wouldn't perform her best and that I was known to be lazy and a slacker. Definitely not true. She did offer her sincere apology and said that she felt terrible knowing what all my husband and I were going through and she didn't help. But I just can't see myself forgiving her or even trusting her again after this situation. Basically, the best friend that I have known all these years has turned into a complete stranger. I feel like I don't even know her anymore. This isn't someone I want in my life. Especially after she caused me to look foolish by bad mouthing me to her boss. I told her that our friendship was over and that she'd better have a talk with her husband because no way was I holding this back from mine. A few hours later, my husband got a call from hers. Tori told him the news and they are now separating and he will file for a divorce in the upcoming weeks. Tori is, believe it or not, moving in with her co-worker. I haven't heard from her since leaving the restaurant and honestly don't plan on talking to her ever again. Almost 30 years of friendship gone over a string of lies. As for my husband, he and I had a long talk after revealing to me that he already knew what Tori did. I explained to him that it is never okay to keep things like that from me, no matter what. I understand he and Matt have a very good friendship, but I and my feelings should come first in future situations like this. He agreed and will eventually gain my trust back. Just to clear things up, my husband never knew about Tori's affair. All he knew was that Tori sabotaged the job. Also, a lot of you are saying the co-worker deserves to know and I agree. I am an old the hour department at her job and requested a meeting with the woman I had a phone interview with. The meeting is Friday and I will tell her then about Tori's lie and the affair and I will let her handle it how she wants to from there. After this, I'm completely done with her. A lot of you think that me talking to her boss is a bad idea. If anything, I probably won't bring up the affair situation, but I do want to bring it to her attention that Tori lied to her. I don't think her boss would appreciate having employees that would easily lie to their face to cover up shady stuff that they've been doing. I may just send her an ML with that part of the recording attached and a quick explanation instead of going to meet her. And yes, I recorded our encounter. I honestly don't care if telling her boss is a messed up thing to do. She didn't give a crap about me when she watched me struggle for months and prevented me from getting a job that I desperately needed at the time. So why should I give a crap about her? She's not my friend anymore anyway. She needs to learn that she can't just do whatever she wants with zero consequences so stop telling me not to say anything. Found out my daughter, 12 female, may have been abused by my father. I may mess, need advice. God, I don't even know if this is the right place, but I need some help. Before I go into details she is scheduled to see a therapist tomorrow, the soonest I could get her in. I learned about this literally an hour ago. Apparently, she went to her male cousin with this first, begging him not to tell anyone. He, thank god, encouraged her to talk to his parents if she didn't feel comfortable coming to me. She finally did talk to my brother and sister-in-law. They immediately came to me. My daughter is 12. Being a single mom, our living situation hasn't been entirely stable her whole life and there were times where we had to live with my parents for extended periods. Basically from the age of 6 to 9, we lived with them. During that time, my father would watch her for me during the day while I worked since he's retired. This is, according to her, when things started to happen. She won't go into details and none of us forced her to, but she's upset about it. All I know is it somehow involved bribery of treats for, god I don't even want to know what. But she never said a word to me, because I'm very close with my dad, and she was afraid I'd be mad at her. Hearing that makes me feel so terrible, that she didn't feel she could come to me with this. Apparently, she was dealing with this all on her own, and struggling with nightmares, and I'm guessing some form of PTSD. The only reason she finally said something was she was seeing him start to treat her younger girl cousin in the same way, and she was scared for her. Apparently, she tried telling my mom, her grandma, what happened to her when it was going on, and she told her she was mistaken, and just misunderstood what was going on. I am at a loss. I would never have thought my father capable of such things, ever, but I believe her. 
She has no reason to lie about this, and is a very trustworthy child. And I'm terrified what this is going to do to our family. I know once she talks to the therapist, the ball is going to get rolling on legal crap. And, again I'm terrified. I'm confused. I'm torn. I love my dad. He's been there for me over everything, and has given me so much love and support over my lifetime. I'm struggling to see him as anything but that, and the fact that I'm not instantly infuriated with him makes me feel like an awful person. How can I not be just completely disgusted with him? Obviously, my main concern is my daughter, and I'm going to do everything I can for her, but, I just, I need advice on how to handle the upcoming crap storm that will be my family. Like, I'm not even sure if I should confront my mom about it, or just wait for the cops to get involved. I just, I don't know what to do, or expect and I'm a mess. I'm still struggling with this, but doing everything I can for my daughter. Though I was going to wait till, after she saw someone, at everyone's advice I called CPS this morning. They took the report, and verified that they felt she was safe so there was no intervention on their part, and that they would be forwarding the report to the police. So, I guess now I just wait. Update. Daughter molested by my dad. CPS was contacted by me. They in turn contacted the police. I had a meeting with a detective the next day who sat down, and took a statement from me. He insisted that my daughter speaks to someone at a specialized house for children in these situations, before she saw a therapist. I agreed and we got her set up for the next day. This location would record the interviews for investigation purposes, but didn't hide that from the children. I won't go into too many details, but it was very hard on my daughter, and she had to end the interview early, because she was so upset. I found out some details about what happened. What she told them was bad, but it could have been worse. But they felt she wasn't telling them everything. I feel the same as some of the things she mentioned to me weren't mentioned at all to them. Further conversation with my daughter revealed she felt they were pushing her too hard, and so she shut down. The next day the detective went to speak to my dad about the accusations. About 2 hours worth of talking, and he finally confessed to what she said he did. There was no arrest at the time. Shortly after I get multiple phone calls from my mother, none of which I answered. I spoke to her via text, and she siding with my dad. First, she reassured me that my dad wasn't mad with either of us, and that it wasn't that bad, and that it was completely innocent, and she just mistook what happened. She told me that my dad had explained to her what really happened, and the detective was just out to get him. Then she went on about how they were going to have to move, and how she couldn't show her face around their social events anymore. That she and he would do everything they could to help my daughter. I told her my daughter's not seeing him anymore and that was a terrible thing for me to say. She hasn't spoken to me since. I have the support of one brother and sister-in-law, but circumstances have changed, so that they have to move out of state temporarily because of this. My mother had chosen to lash out at them as being at fault for this coming to light, since they were the ones who told me about it after my daughter confided in them. My other brother hasn't even contacted me, and has only been in touch with my parents, so I can only assume he's siding with them. There's also a very good chance my father is getting arrested on Monday, but I'm a mess. I'm getting so much pressure from my family, that this was a misunderstanding. And I want so badly for that to be true. Half of my brain is telling me that maybe they are right, maybe I've been overreacting over nothing. The other half of my brain is telling me that whatever it was that did happen, has completely messed up my child. She was an absolute wreck leaving the interview. I just want to stress though, as much as I'm struggling, as hard as this is for me mentally and emotionally, I'm doing nothing to hinder the investigation, and made no hint of my internal debate to my daughter. I've told her I'm behind her 100% and I mean it. I just, I have no one around me to support me, to back me up. All of my support is online, and while appreciated I just, need someone to stand next to me, and say she's right and this is wrong. I'm struggling to go through this alone and handle my own emotions, while maintaining a strong face for my daughter. I have to return to work soon, and my daughter will be staying at home alone while I do, and terrified her grandpa will come over while I'm at work. But I have no one. Absolutely no one. My parents were my rock, my support on every part of my life and they are gone from me now. 
I know this is more venting than asking for advice, as there is very little that anyone outside can do, but, I just needed to write it out. If there is any advice, please give it. I'm trying to get through this in whatever way I can. At the suggestion of others, I ordered a camera for the front door. I don't think they have a key for the front door, so that should be fine. I should also mention I've seen a huge change in my daughter's behavior since this came to light. She's happier, more open to talking to me, and just a different girl. She's expressed multiple times about how relieved she is to have told someone, and explained that many of the things she's done in the past, cutting her hair, wearing baggy clothes, were done in attempts to keep her grandpa from noticing her. I still think there are things that she hasn't told anyone about what happened, but I feel like with time it will come out. She likes the therapist she met with today so fingers crossed. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, hit like, get subscribed, and give the OP any advice you have in the comment section, and support the original writers with upvotes, links in the description box.